Okay, so <clears throat> I'm actually going to um, do a couple of things with this video. I'm going to have it as a standalone video, and it will be a part of this Kenwood 11 series, right? There are going to be a couple of couple of segments to that. So uh, this video will be released early, and then the series will actually be released in March of 2023, I think is when it would come up in the queue. So what I want to do is cover the Kenwood Model 11 and timer issues. Now I'm not going to cover every possible timer issue. Um, I'm just going to cover what I encountered, what are, from what I understand, are um, kind of common issues with the timer and a couple of different uh, options you have to address it. Right. So number one, let's say you come across one of these or you have one of these and it either only works with the timer set to you know 20 minutes or 40 minutes or 120 minutes or whatever and basically won't go to reset or you try to move it to reset and it breaks like what happened with this one right so basically the timer has to be used you can't you can't not power on the receiver without using the timer or that plastic shaft is already broken and this thing just spins around and the power won't come on right so I'm going to talk about some options you have to address the issue. We're going to go from kind of ignoring the timer um, all the way to um, a couple of different methods that you can use to address the broken uh, shaft coupler on the inside. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to move the camera to kind of first look at the timer, um, show you um, the part that we're talking about and then we can look at the damage and then the options that you have. So I'm going to move the camera up top. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is a receiver that I'm that I'm still working on. So ignore the the dirty uh, inside of the cabinet and the mess that's on my bench. But if you're watching these electronics repair videos, we kind of all have the same <laughs> messy bench, lot, you know, too many things, not enough space on here. So I'm going to zoom in on the timer. So there's the part that we're going to be talking about. And kind of the first option. So you get this and either the timer um, must be used. Basically the timer won't go back to the reset position, right? Or the timer's just spinning because the coupler is, is broken. One of the couplers is broken. So the first option you have is to bypass the timer. Now you can do this a couple of different ways. Um, you can do a couple of these different methods. Right, so you can kind of have a, a combination of um, trying to repair the coupler and then bypassing the timer just in case, you know, especially if you're going to be um, selling this or, you know, moving, moving the unit on down the road. So there are two wires that go into the timer. So basically the timer is a part of this, of this circuit. So without the timer engaged, and when I say engaged, basically it's not off. Right, so if I turn it to let's say 20 minutes, which I don't want to do because I don't want to have to deal with you know waiting 20 minutes for each one of these segments, um, you can just jump these. So you can jump them with a piece of wire. You can remove them and directly connect them, right? But basically, you remove the timer from the circuit. Now, um, that's probably I, I think probably a lot of people do that. You could you could try to source a, a, a working timer. I don't know how often they come up on. Uh, you know eBay or something like that. You can try to source one of these um, but you know uh, Especially lately. I don't trust what anybody says about anything <laughs> If you've watched or there are probably gonna be upcoming videos to the channel uh, Just a ton of stuff has come in that was represented as as working fine and uh, it was far from uh, uh, working so <clears throat> Not that all people are are dishonest, but it seems lately, the last couple of weeks, there have been a lot of people that have been dishonest. So, of course, you can try to get a new part and put it in there, right? Uh, so, again, like, I, I would say, you know, number one, <clears throat> the first thing that you can do to address this issue is just take the timer out of the circuit. Bypass it. Again, you can jump these, you can disconnect them and connect them together, right? Whatever method you choose to do, you can do that, remove the timer out of the circuit, and you can just leave, 
right the let's say it's a spinning uh, timer knob you can just leave it like that and and go on the receiver is going to work uh, perfectly fine so let's go on to what I have done to this receiver so far but then we'll talk about a couple of different um, kind of options within my initial repair to the receiver okay so now we're looking at the bottom of the receiver so I'm gonna call this Kind of, you know, this will be method two. Like method one was just ignore the timer and bypass it. Right. So method two, and what I have done, just as kind of an interim fix for the timer, was I have chosen to use zip ties. Whoops. So I don't know if you can tell if I can zoom in enough to show you, but. I've placed three zip ties on this shaft and I can move the timer just fine. Now I've tightened these down quite a bit. They don't move. I'm going to remove these to show you the piece that's broken. Now, you know, you, so if, if you're going to use zip ties, here's the thing. This was a temp fix. If this were my unit, I would not probably leave it in this state. But these zip ties do work, and I've used these small zip ties for all sorts of repairs in the past. Um, Turntable cog gears out of you know made out of this white plastic because this plastic gets pretty brittle after a while. So um, I just have three zip ties, and I have it zip tied in position, and and it works, and it works. Now, if I were to stick with the zip tie solution, <laughs> which is probably the worst way to address this. Right? But if this were mine and I didn't care and you know I don't mind getting in here and farting around with this if, if they break, I would I would either glue these in position, right? So take some super glue and maybe some baking soda or some type of epoxy or some, you know something like that. And I would make sure that these aren't going to move out of position. And I'm also going to be very careful with how much um force I use when I turn the knob because you know these can the zip ties aren't going to break but the plastic can still break right so let's say these are the now the strong point you know something else can can snap this end of the shat of the of the coupler could sh uh, shatter or break right so this is like <clears throat> probably the least preferred method but it, it has been working on this receiver with no problem so I'm going to remove these Right, so let me first remove these two screws and I will show you that it is indeed broken. And we'll talk about some other things that we can do. Right, so if I were to use this as my permanent solution, like I like I mentioned, if it were mine, I would use some type of glue, right, to, to help solidify. And, and strengthen the zip ties, um, right? But um, I would bypass the timer, right? So here's what happens with these, they crack, right? They crack and so right now my knob, this knob is just spinning freely, right? It's not, it doesn't do anything at all. All right, so, and I'm just gonna cut these, these ties off because I can just put new ones there if this is what I choose to do. Right again, I would use either some glue, some super glue, some JB Weld, some epoxy, something like that to to make this bond a little bit stronger and then uh, and then bypass the timer. All right. All right, so that that was kind of method number 2 to address this. So let's move on to Kind of option number three or method number three that you can use to uh, to to repair it. Okay, so <clears throat> I've loosened the screws that actually hold the timer in position. So on the on the other side, there are two screws that go in these two holes right here. All right, so I've removed these, and the reason I did that is I've loosened the coupler, but I've got to kind of I have to move the timer in a position to where I can pull the coupler off like that. Now if we look at this, if we look at the coupler, 
we know that we have this initial crack, right, where it just broke off, but there's another crack that's starting to form here. You can see it. Whoops. You can see it right there. Another crack is starting to form, right? So this is is really not long <laughs> for this for this world, right? So if I were to use this method that I'm going to describe right now, I would make sure that I would do something to address this crack. And now knowing that this other crack is here, I would also with the zip ties, I would I would put a zip tie here as well, just to kind of, you know, get a jump on that. So this other method is, uh, and I and I talked about gluing it with the zip ties, but this method would be to glue it, right, using some type of, again like JB Weld or super glue and baking soda, and see if you can get it to where it's strong enough to bond. Now I'm. I wouldn't be real confident in that repair. I know that the baking soda uh, and super glue repairs can be very, very strong. And you can really build this up on the outside because you have all this space down here. So what you can do or what I would do is layer of super glue, right? And you don't want to use gel. I just, I think I just buried my super glue bottle back here somewhere because it was kind of, oh no, here it is. So you want to use a liquid super glue, right? And it would be layer of super glue, layer of baking baking soda. Layer of super glue, layer of baking soda. And you would want to get everything, right, on this shaft all the way around, right? You don't want to get you don't want to get it into the screw holes. You want to make sure that you don't um, block those. So you'd have to be really careful. You get both sides of that. You'd get right the crack here, the crack here. And it's it's kind of it's kind of like welding it in position. I would also do it on, on the crack here, right? And it would make it pretty strong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do that with this piece right now. So, and I'll kind of show you with the first layer what that would look like, right? The first layer of super glue, just to kind of uh, give you an idea of what this process would look like. So first thing I would do is, or that you should do, right, is rough up the plastic. Now I'm not sure how well this will work, and I'm super popular today, how well this will work with this really soft plastic. And again, I don't know how, how I would trust this or how long I would trust this to, to hold it in position. But you wanna rough it up. And again, I'm not gonna go crazy because this is probably not the solution I'm going to go with because there's another option as well. But I would rough it up, right? And I'm gonna zoom out, because I'm gonna have to do this on another part of the bench. And I'm getting a bit better at remembering <laughs> which way is zoom in and out as I work with this a little bit more. So um, what I need to do is grab my baking soda, which is just over here. And I need my razor blade. And I'll show you what this looks like. So I'm not gonna, I don't know if I could zoom in. I have to move everything around. Oh, you know what? Uh, thinking on the fly here. Let me put this here and zoom in. Show you what this looks like. So there's the crack. And I would apply some glue, and I don't want to go crazy with the glue, but you know, this is not, cosmetically I'm not going to be very concerned with how this looks. I'm gonna do, since it it fits together nicely in this, in this position, this orientation, I'm going to do a layer of glue like that. And then take my knife, with a little bit of baking soda. Put, oops, I missed it. And I'm gonna get some baking soda on there, flatten it down. All right, give that a second to set up. And then I can go on to do the sides. All right? And I if I were using this method, I would I would do you know several several coats. Whoops. Maybe my little makeshift 
platform is not the best. I have something else I can I can use here. So I've got some super glue baking soda and it's already it is not moving at all and I've only got this little area here kind of bonded with it. Let's see if I can do this without gluing my my hand here. So then what I would do is I need to remove this screw and this other screw and it's easy to keep track of which way this goes in because this end is slotted, this end is solid, the slotted end goes towards the back, goes towards the timer, this end goes towards the front. So I would just continue with the super glue and baking soda. And you can sand it, you know, in between coats, layers, I guess. Now again, I don't know that I would trust this as a permanent solution because I don't know how long term this will this will hold because you can't really get inside you can't really get inside of the hole that the shaft goes into right because it would make it it's it's a pretty tight fit So I don't know, you know, that, that crack is still going to be there and it's still going to be a, a weak point. I'm trying to not use a ton of CA glue on this or super glue on this. Or baking, baking soda. All right, so, and then I would also do the same with this crack, just to kind of build it up. <clears throat> Boy, this, again, things I don't tell you when you're thinking about doing this on YouTube, like it's really hard to watch what you're actually doing in <laughs> the camera at the same time. All right, so that one's kind of ugly. All right, so I did get a little bit on the inside here. I'm gonna scrape that out. Now, long term, is that gonna hold? I mean, I'm really pulling on that. I mean, and it's not coming free at all. So, would I trust this? Maybe, right? Um, again, if I were to do this, and I, and I were going to trust this solution long term, I would sand it down, put several coats on it, and this thing would be really, really ugly in terms of the appearance of it, right? But that is, I mean, I think that's pretty good. But the problem is, this plastic is brittle. So you do that, and again, you, you know, try to get, get it to reset, uh, it could snap somewhere else. So, um, again, if I were to do this, I would most likely bypass bypass the timer, right? So that's the super glue baking soda method for putting this together. Again, this is the ugly, right? I would sand this down, try to make it a little bit cleaner, but again, this is hidden, so it doesn't matter. So let's go to the third option. Well, I guess this would be the fourth option if you consider just ignoring it uh, to, to address this uh, timer coupler issue. Okay, method four, and I totally stole this from a thread on Audio Karma, would be to grab a 14 gauge uh, electrical splicer and basically use this to replace the coupler, 
Now, um, this seems, it's a pretty big honking piece of metal, right? Um, basically what you would do with this is, let me see if I can find the right size on here. I probably, this is my metric. I have to get my standard. Right, so with this, basically you replace that plastic coupler with a metal coupler. Right, now this is the size that they, that they used in the forum thread. It looks like this will work, but I'm not convinced. But the point is you can use something like this. Now I'd have to remove this end of the shaft, but basically it would go into, right, it would go into the position, it would take the place of the plastic coupler. Um, and you would use this to turn the knob instead. So I think I would have to, yeah, I'd have to remove the knob assembly. Uh, and this was like six bucks. So, but this would go into position here, right? And it would just become the new coupler. Now this is a long-term fix. And I would say that if you're confident that you can get to the reset position, right? I would use this fix. The problem with this particular unit is I don't know that the that I I can get um, the timer to the reset position because when I turned the knob, I mean I I it's not like I barely turned it and it cracked, but there was quite a bit of resistance. And I don't know anything about the internals on these timers. The purpose of this video is not to get into the timer, right? Because um, I would have no idea what I'm doing in here. Um, but this would be this would be the long-term fix for this. Something like this. Now, in the Audio Karma post, the... Uh, or thread, right? The uh, the poster said that they removed the little pin on this shaft. I don't know if you can see that pin there. But the opening on this makes it look like you would not have to remove that because this is a pretty wide opening here. So, but you know, this that would be, I mean, that's a gigantic opening for that little tiny, for that little tiny shaft, so. Um, I've already talked to the shop owner. He just wants me to bypass the switch. So I don't, I'm not inclined to try this at this point. Plus I don't want to have to tear the front of this off. But I think you get the point, right? We can use something like this. Maybe you can find a smaller size. Again, the, um, this two pack, right? I got two of them. This two pack, 14 gauge, uh, and then 1.0. I'm not sure what 1.0 means. I'm not an electrician, so I don't know exactly what any of this stuff means on this package, but this is the one that I picked up from my local big box, right? I got it from Home Depot, but um, right, that's what you can do as well. So put that there, right? And there's such a, a large space here that this would have no problem being put into that position. So yeah, so you can use one of these. Let me just see what this shaft looks like here. Yeah, I'd have to remove screws from the front and take this whole front piece apart, and I'm not going to do that, so... Because this is not what I'm going to do in terms of the repair. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this down, and then I'm going to apply maybe one or two additional coats of CA glue. And um, I think this is the method because I'm going to bypass that switch anyway, but I'm going to I'm going to test it out. So, after this, after I install this, we will put it back in and uh, just verify functionality and uh, see how this repair worked. All right, so here's what it looks like after. And what I wound up doing was an entire ring of CA glue on here. Um, <clears throat> now, I tried to move the timer into the reset position and it this timer will not go. And again, I'm not, I don't know, 
yeah, I'm not even gonna look at trying to get into this timer to figure that out, but I tried moving it and it just see, you can see the whole timer moving. So I think something inside of the timer is, there's some resistance to it. So again, what the shop owner wants me to do is just bypass the timer, which is what I'm going to do, but, but this will work now. So, works just fine, right? So now the timer, it'll ratchet, it'll work, all that kind of stuff. Um, but um, it'll only work with the timer set to some, some time value. So anyway, hopefully you, f you find this useful. Um, again, this will be a standalone video, plus I will... Um, you know, this will be part, uh, I don't know, two or three of this, um, of the series on this uh, Kenwood after I get it cleaned up. So, as always, if you like what you see, hit like, hit subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video.